The Silk Princess by Charles Santor. The legend of the secret thread begins 5,000 years ago in China, the ancient Middle Kingdom. The emperor and his noble apprentice had two sons whom the emperor dotted upon. He also had a young daughter, the princess, whom he hardly ever noticed. The emperor, the son of heaven, was a grand figure. Regal in his bearing, he reigned in splendor. Although his riches could afford him any pleasure, he was greatly displeased that his royal garments and had spent years searching for fabric worthy of his nobility. His quest had been unsuccessful until one fine day in the pleasant corner of the royal gardens, the search came to an end. On this fine afternoon, the Empress and the Princess were enjoying the royal gardens. The Empress was sitting in the shade of the mulberry tree, enjoying her fine evening tea. She watched her daughter playing among the spring flowers and did not notice when a cream-colored cocoon fell from the tree above and landed in her teacup. The little princess, however, did. The princess peered into the teacup and was astonished to see the cocoon unraveling into hot tea, forming a long, delicate thread. Oh, mother, look, it's as fine as your hair, she cried, holding up one end of the shimmering thread. The empress smiled and she asked, shall we see how long it is? Yes, said the princess, delighted at her mother's proposal. I know, she shouted. I will tie the end of the thread around my waist and you, mother, will hold the cocoon. I shall walk away from you and we shall see how long this fine thread is. I will go to the end of the garden, should the thread reach that far. The empress agreed, for she never imagined the cocoon would unravel to the end of the royal gardens. The princess, astonished to begin the game, kissed her mother goodbye bowed and started on her way. Attached to the thread, the little princess glided away from her mother like a kite on a gentle breeze. She walked past rock formations representing the five sacred mountains beside glistening pools and continued on, looking back from time to time to see her mother getting smaller and smaller in the distance. The princess had never been away from her mother before, yet she did not hesitate. I am not afraid at all. This must be a magical thread, and she thought as she walked along. After a while, feeling a little sleepy, the princess yawned and stretched out on the cool grass in the shade of an ancient tree and fell into a deep sleep. When she awoke, the little princess looked around in wonder. Unfamiliar trees and plants of every description lined her way. She passed among camellias, magnolias, and beautiful fragrant flowers. She was so taken with the lovely blossoms that she nearly walked right into an enormous spider web that stretched across her path. Watch where you're going. Are you trying to destroy my web? Startled princess found herself face to face with an angry glaring spider. Before she could utter the words, the spider hissed again. This is my lair. Find your own place to spin your flimsy web. Frightened, the little princess apologized. Bowing deeply, she slowly backed away and then found a safer path through the flowers. Ahead towered the palace entrance and still the thread had not reached its end. The princess kept going and soon she passed out of the royal gardens and through the great gates of the palace itself. All the guards at the entrance bowed as the princess walked past them. 
I'm out of the royal palace. Even mother has never been this far. The princess looked around in amazement. In the distance, she saw the five straight grid mountains rising into the clouds. As she walked along the wide road leading away from the palace, from time to time, the little princess would touch the shiny thread that tied her to her mother. This was truly an adventure, she thought to herself. I have heard wondrous stories at court about the world beyond this palace. Some even say there is a terrible dragon that sleeps under the bridge leading to the five sacred mountains. It is said that to cross the bridge one must be careful not to wake him, for he can hear the faintest footfall. I can be very quiet, the little princess said to herself, and I would so love to see the dragon. Gradually, the round the road began to rise, at first gently and then sleepily as it would higher into the mountains. The princess came to a bridge spanning a deep gorge. This must be where the dragon sleeps, she thought. It was so silent, only the sound of the wind could be heard, and the princess was no longer sure she wanted to see the dragon. But still, she was determined to cross that bridge. Carefully, the princess removed her shoes, closed her eyes, and dashed barefoot onto the bridge with a long shiny thread stretching out behind her. In her haste, the little princess stumbled and dropped one of the wooden shoes into the bridge. It landed with a crack and the sound echoed off the rocks and filled the gorge. Suddenly, she heard a mighty roar and a huge dragon emerged right behind her. The princess scooped up her shoe and ran for life. The beast sprang, its jaws snapping to devour her. But the dragon's huge claws tripped over the shiny thread, sending the monster hurling into the gorge and onto the rocks below. The terrified princess reached the other side and kept running until the bridge was far behind her. The princess wandered in the midst of the five sacred mountains. She was exhausted from her ordeal and long climb, and she was also very hungry. Darkness was falling, and the little princess decided that she had gone as far as she could go. When she turned to use the thread to guide her home, she saw that it was broken. Now she was lost. The little princess had been searching for the lost thread for hours when she came upon a small hut of bamboo and thatch. She peered inside and saw a very old man sitting at the loom beside the fire. He was weaving a fabric that shimmered and glistened in the firelight. She had never seen anything so beautiful. I have been waiting for you, the old man said. Welcome to my humble home, princess. You have arrived just in time, and I am nearly out of thread. How do you know my name? The little princess asked. The silkworm sent you, he replied. They have chosen you to reveal their secret to the emperor. You have brought the thread I need to finish the fabric I have been weaving for him. Are you one of the mountain gods the ancient stories speak of? The little princess asked, bowing very low. The old man smiled and said, Child, your journey has been long. You must be hungry. And he offered the princess some hot soup and a bed of straw by the fire. Once she had eaten, the princess told him all about her adventure with the spider and the ferocious dragon and how she came to be lost. And as the old man continued his weaving, he revealed the silkworm's secret and how to transform their cocoons into the precious thread, which he called silk. She listened carefully and she spoke of harvesting the cocoons. His soft voice was like music and it blended with the constant thrum of the loom like a lullaby. Soon, she was fast asleep. When the princess awoke, it was morning. It's time for us to leave, princess, said the old man. The loom was already packed on his back and the fabric is nearly finished and you must present it to the emperor. But my mother, father, he never speaks to me. Besides, it's not finished yet, the princess said, rubbing her sleep from her eyes. 
That will be done on your journey down the mountain, said the old weaver. As you gather the thread that leads you home, I will use it to complete the fabric. By the time we reach the royal gardens, the fabric for the emperor robe will be finished. But the thread was broken. How shall we find our way? asked the little princess. You needn't worry, my child, said the old man. I know the way to the bridge. And there we will find the rest of the thread to lead us to the palace. So off they went, the little princess and the old weaver, down the sacred mountain to the bridge. And they found the edge of the thread and gathered it as they went. From time to time they would stop. While the little princess rested, the old weaver would unpack his loom and continue to work on the silken fabric. At last they passed through the monumental gates of the palace and into the quiet splendor of the royal gardens. They were nearing the end of the journey when they rested for the last time in the shade of an ancient tree. As the afternoon shadows grew longer, the princess dozed off, watching the old man at the loom. When the princess awoke, the old weaver was gone, his loom was gone, and so was the beautiful silk fabric he had woven. They were nowhere to be seen. The thread, however, was still tied around her waist. She quickly began reeling it in as she hurried back to tell the mother all that had happened. The little princess was thrilled to see her mother still waiting under the mulberry tree holding the cocoon. The emperor smiled as her little kite came gliding home. Did you have a nice nap? The empress asked her daughter, for she knew the little girl never missed an afternoon nap. Oh, mother, there was a huge spider and an awful dragon under a bridge and a very old man with a loom, she said excitedly. She went on to recount the whole adventure, and she revealed the silkworm secret that the old man had shared with her and described the beautiful bolt of silk that she had woven for the emperor. My dear, you have quite an adventure, said the empress. Something in this extraordinary tale stood out. The empress repeated the world's the word silk to herself and then she looked down at the cocoon she was still holding and she smiled knowingly and summoned the royal weavers follow the princess's instructions she said gather up all the cocoons you can find and weave a fabric worthy of the robe of the emperor the royal weavers obeyed they produced a truly magnificent robe as it had never been before. The emperor, delighted with his beautiful robe, finally noticed his little girl, and he was so very pleased with her and the discovery that he proclaimed that all the finest clothes in the royal court must be made of silk. From this day forward, his daughter, the little princess, was known as the Silk Princess and was greatly honored throughout the land. But her wonder, mysterious, shimmering thread, the gift of the silkworms, remained a secret kept by the children and her children's children and on and on for 3,000 years. The 